okay, we're looking at the integral between the limits of zero and two pi of sine of sine of x minus x dx. And the first thing to notice is that we're integrating over a whole cycle of sine. So if we just sketch uh, the graph of sine of x, if this is our xy plane, then the sine curves look something like this. So it oscillates up and down and it goes through the origin and at two pi, it also crosses the x-axis. And it's periodic, so between zero and two pi, it's just gonna repeat every two pi. So this is gonna give us a hint of how to approach this problem, because if we use a substitution of u equals to sine of x, then the new limits are going to help us. And this is because the new limits are going to turn into, if we just put zero and two pi into this formula, we know that at zero and two pi sine of x equals zero. So our limits are just gonna be zero and zero, which is really helpful because if we can convert this integral in terms of only the variable u, then we know that our answer is gonna be zero because the limits are the same. So let's try and use this substitution. And to do that, we need to differentiate this. So we need du equals cosine of x dx. And then we can try and put this in. So this gives us sine of, so sine of x turns to u, so u minus x. So we're not sure what to do with x yet. I'll just let, I'll just write x in here and then we, we wanna change this. And we wanna replace dx by du. So we can just divide by cosine on both sides. And this gives us du over cosine of x. So we still have these two factors of x and cosine of x. Um, if we can express this in terms of u, then we know that our answer is gonna be zero, as we were saying. So to get x in terms of u, we can use this equation here. We know that u equals uh, sine of x, and this means that x equals the inverse of sine, which is arc sine. So x equals arc sine of u. And this is how we express x in terms of u. And then we also need to express cosine of x in terms of u. And to do this, we need to remember the Pythagorean identity. So if you remember, we have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals one. This relates sine and cosine, and we know how to express sine in terms of u. So this tells us that cosine of x equals the square root of one minus sine squared of x. And we can just sub in uh, u for sine of x. So this is the same as square root of one minus u squared. So let's just sub all this in. We have the integral between zero and zero of sine of u minus, so x equals arc sine of u. And then we multiply by du divided by cosine of x is this. So it's the square root of one minus u squared. And although this is a really horrible integrand, we don't need to evaluate it because we have these limits that are the same. So for any limits, if it's from a to a, it's always gonna be zero because we're trying to find the area where one of the lengths is zero. So our answer is very nice, it's just zero. And that's our solution.